Okay guys, um, this is a redo of a video for solving linear equations. Um, so um, when solving equations, guys, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to solve for x. We're trying to get x alone piece by piece. Um, and we have to do this using the correct inverse operations. So we're going to be moving things from one side of the equation to the other. And we have to do this correctly. We can only do this if we perform the correct operation. So I just want to remind you that for addition, for addition, its inverse is subtraction. So addition undoes subtraction and likewise subtraction undoes um, addition. Also with division, its inverse is multiplication and to undo something that's being multiplied will divide. So these inverses we're going to be using and you have to use the correct inverse to get from one side of the equation to the other. Let's do our first example. Okay, I'm going to start out basic really quick. Um, looking at this one, we have x plus 4 is equal to negative 12. We're trying to solve for x. So remember, piece by piece, we want to get x all by itself. Okay, but we have to do this um, using the correct operations. So we have x plus 4. So connected to x is the plus 4. We need to get it the plus 4 to the other side of the equation using the correct operation. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Now notice over here, notice over here on the left, that leaves us with x, and then the plus 4 and minus 4, they cancel out. They, they add up to be 0. So that was why we did that. So we have x is equal to negative 12 minus 4 more is negative 16. And that's our final answer right there. Let's do another one. 4t is equal to 48. Once again, a very basic one. I just wanted to start out with these so we can make sure we know how to um, do the correct operations to undo these things. So our 4 is connected to our t by multiplication. So to undo that 4, we've got to do division. And we've got to do it to both sides of the equation. So then once again, over here on the left, the 4s divide out. That leaves me with t is equal to 48 divided by 4, which is equal to 12. So we get t is equal to 12. All right, let's get to it. So we have negative 27 plus 6y is equal to 3 times y minus 3. So this one's a lot bigger. And what we've got to do is focus on the left side of the equation um, for a second, simplify that if possible, and then focus on the right side of the equation and simplify that if possible. And then we can go through and we can combine like terms and we can solve for this piece by piece. So focusing on the left here, um, nothing can simplify. Um, so I'm just going to rewrite it. We have negative 27 plus 6y, which is equal to, but on the right here, we definitely can simplify this further. This 3 is multiplied to my y minus 3. So I've got to make sure I distribute that 3 through to y. So 3 times y is 3y. And I can't forget to distribute it through to my negative 3. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So now I've simplified the left. I've simplified the right. So now piece by piece, we're going to combine all of our y's and we're going to combine all our numbers. But we have to do this by moving things from one side of the equation to the other. And so we have to perform the correct operation. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to notice over here on the right, we have a positive 3y. To get that to the other side, I have to subtract 3y. So I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides and simplify. On the left, we still have negative 27, and then we have positive 6y minus 3y, so it leaves me with positive 3y's. That's on the left, and then is equal to our 3y's cancel out. That was the point. They added up to be 0, and then we still have our negative 9. Now, piece by piece, remember what the goal is. My goal is to get y all by itself. All right, so piece by piece, I need to get y by itself. So notice right here, I have a negative 27. I need to add 27 to both sides to get that to go away. So now on the left, those are gone. We have 3y is equal to 27 minus 9, which is 18. And then my next step will be to get y alone. Piece by piece will be to divide the 3 because the 3 was multiplied to y. And division undoes multiplication. So then our 3s divide out. And we have y is equal to, right now we have y is equal to 18 over 3. And we know that 18 over 3 just means 18 divided by 3. So we get y is equal to 6. All right, next one. 
So we have 5c minus 9 is equal to 8 minus 2c's. If you look on the left side of my equation here, um, there's nothing we can do to simplify that further. On the right, there's nothing we can do to simplify that any further. So what we want to do is combine our c's, combine all of our variables, and then combine our numbers. But we have to move it from one side of the equation to the other, so we have to perform the correct operation. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine my c's. So I'm going to add two c's to both sides. 5c's plus 2c's is 7c's. So I have 7c's minus 9 is equal to 8. Um, because, you know, the two, negative 2c two and the positive 2c, those cancel out. That was the point of doing that. Now, piece by piece, my ultimate goal is to get c by itself. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. All right here, so we have 7c on the left. The 9s, they went away, um, became 0, and then it is equal to 9 plus 8, which is 17. Now, piece by piece, we're trying to get c alone. The 7 is multiplied to the c, so to undo 7, I've got to divide by c, divide both sides by c. So we have c is equal to 17 over 7. Um, I would rather have the fraction answer than the decimal, and that doesn't simplify any further. So um, nothing goes into 17 or 7. Those are actually prime numbers. So that's as simplified as it gets. All right, um, just a second. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, there's a couple ways we can solve this one. Um, but remember what our ultimate goal is, is to get x alone piece by piece. Um, I'm kind of debating on which one to show you I'm, um, I'm going to do. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so first of all, keep in mind, we're trying to get x alone piece by piece. So what we can do here is we can focus on the left side of the equation. We can simplify that down and then focus on the right and simplify that down. And then from there, we can go through and combine everything and then um, solve for x piece by piece. So on the left here, I'm going to simplify this. So we have 2 minus 3 times x plus 4. Well, this negative 3 is multiplied, since it's right next to the parentheses, it's multiplied to the x plus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that through. So we have negative 3, and we've got to distribute the negative through. I should have said that in the beginning. So we have negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x. And then we have negative 3 times positive 4 here, which is negative 12. All right, so on the left here, that's what we've got so far, which is equal to 8. Now, once again, we can simplify that a little bit more over here on the left. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I have my um, 2 and negative 12. That's the only thing I can combine. So I still have my negative 3x. And then now I'm going to combine 2 minus 12. And 2, positive 2 minus 12 would be negative 10. So right now on the left, since I've combined 2 and negative 12, I get negative 10. And that's equal to 8. And now from here, piece by piece, we can just solve for x. So piece by piece, we're trying to get x alone. So the negative 10 here, I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Since it was subtract 10, we're going to add 10 to both sides. The inverse of subtraction is addition. And on the left here, I have negative 3x plus 10 to add up to 0, which is equal to 18. 8 plus 10 is 18. And then negative 3 is connected to x by multiplication. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 to get x alone. So we get x is equal to negative 6. And that's my final answer. Okay, moving on. 11 plus 3x minus 7 is equal to 6x plus 5 minus 3x. Once again, I would go through and simplify the left and then simplify the right and then go through and piece by piece solve for x. So on the left, we have, I'm going to combine all like terms. We have an 11 and a negative 7. So 11 minus 7 is positive 3. No, 4. Sorry about that. So 11 minus 7 is positive, positive 4. So we have 4 plus 3x on the left. And now on the right, I'm going to combine like terms. It looks like I have a positive 6x minus 3x's, which leaves me with, 3x's. So we have 3x's plus 5. Now piece by piece we're going to combine our x's and piece by piece we're going to combine our numbers. So what I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides since that was a positive 3x. Notice the reason I'm subtracting is because that was a positive 3x. 
So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Now on the left, I have 4 plus, and it looks like negative 3x and positive 3x, that will add up to be 0, which is equal to, and on the left, notice we have positive 3x and negative 3x, so that will add up to be 0 plus 5. And now, what I have here is 4 plus 0, which is 4, which is equal to 0 plus 5. Wait, oh my heck, 4 is equal to 5? What happened? When we started combining like terms, our variable x, it canceled out completely. Now looking at this, guys, looking at this, is 4 equal to 5? Is that a true statement? Is that a true statement? No, 4 is not equal to 5. That is not a true statement. Well, we didn't do this wrong. We did it correctly. We just got to know if we ever have something happen like this, where the variables cancel out completely, and we get to a true, I mean, we get to this thing where we either have a true statement or not true statement, then we'll know if we have either no solution or infinite solutions. So notice, since this was not a true statement, our answer would be no solution. Now let's say we had this happen to us. Um, we had this happen to us and our variables canceled out and we got a true statement. So pretend like our final answer would have been like 5 is equal to 5. Is that a true statement? Yes. So if we had an answer like this, we would say infinite or n, um, any number, really every number is an answer. So infinite solutions. So hopefully you can understand the difference. But at times your variable will completely cancel out. So then you'll just check to see if you ended up with a true statement. If you didn't, then it's no solution. If you came up with a true statement, it would be infinite solutions. So keep that in mind because there is one like that on the homework. All right, let's do this one. We have 5 times x minus 1. Um, minus 2 times the x minus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 1. So once again, I'm going to focus on the left side of the equation. I'm going to go through and simplify this um, first. So I have 5 times x, which is 5x. Then I have 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. Now notice, this is where some of you yesterday were really confused. This negative 2 out here is right next to these parentheses. It's right next to these parentheses, so we know it's being multiplied to it. So let's go ahead and distribute that through. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And then negative 2 times negative 3, and I'm not going to make any errors, is plus 6. A negative times a negative is a positive. And now over here on the right side of the equation, that still simplifies. I mean, that doesn't simplify it still is negative 2x plus 1. All right, I'm going to continue to simplify the left side of the equation because there's some like terms I can combine. So I have 5x's minus 2x's, which leaves me with 3x's. I have negative 5 plus 6. If I combine those two things, I'm going to have plus 1. And now on the right, we still have negative 2x plus 1. So now from here, we can continue to solve for x piece by piece by bringing things from one side of the equation to the next. Let's combine our x's. I'm going to do that by adding 2x, since that was minus 2x on the right. So I'm going to add 2x. So we have 3x's plus 2x's, which is 5x's. We still have our plus 1, which is equal to, and on the right, what was left after those canceled out was 1. Now piece by piece, I'm trying to get x alone. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that leaves me with 5x is equal to 0. And then my next step will be to divide both sides by 5. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 5. So we have x is equal to, what's 0 divided by 5? It's 0. Now if you type that in your calculator, 0 divided by 5, it'll tell you it's 0. Now what if we would have um, got to this point and instead, so our answer is x is equal to 0. But what if we would have got to this answer and instead of had 0 divided by 5, let's say we would have had x is equal to 5 divided by 0. Now, a lot of people tend to think that the answer 5 divided by 0 is equal to 0. But it's actually not, guys. It's actually not. We cannot divide by 0. We can't divide by 0. So really, an answer if you were ever dividing by 0 would be undefined. Undefined. 
it's okay to have a zero on top. So likewise down here, we have a zero on top. That's okay. We just can't have a zero in the denominator of a fraction. If you ever divide by zero, your answer is going to be undefined. Um, we can talk about division of zero all day long. It's kind of a complicated idea, but you really, you just have to kind of know you can't divide by zero, and we won't get into the whys with that right now, um, maybe later, but not right now. So remember, your zero, if it's on top, that's okay, but if it's on bottom, your answer is undefined. Okay, moving on. Now there was one like this on the assignment, so we have 3 plus 3 over x is equal to 9. Now don't let it scare you guys. We're just piece by piece trying to solve for x. Piece by piece trying to solve for x. We're trying to get x along, but we've got to do it using the correct operation here. So the first thing I'm going to do is this 3 that's floating out here on the left, that's being added to 3 over x. So I need to give it away, but we have to use subtraction. All right, so now those added up to be 0, and on the left here I have 3 over x which is equal to 9 minus 3, so 9 times 6, so we get is equal to 6. So then from here, remember, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get x along piece by piece. Well, we have kind of an issue. We have x in the denominator of a fraction. Well, we need to bring it up to the top, but how do we do that? Well, remember that we can multiply both sides by something, and that's okay as long as you do it to both sides. So since this x is in the denominator of a fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So that over here on the left, notice we have x divided by x now. And we have, so we have x divided by x now on the left, so those divide out, which is awesome. Now we're not dealing with x in the denominator. So on the left, I have 3 is equal to, now 6 times x is just 6x. All right, awesome. So now from here, we're just trying to get x along piece by piece. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So at this point, guys, at this point, we have 3. I'm going to come up here, so I don't have to bend down. We have 3 over 6 is equal to, and those 6's divide out, is equal to x. We've achieved our goal. x is all by itself. Now we have to simplify that. And there's a lot of common errors that come in when, they, when people see something like this. Um, okay, so we have 3 divided by 6. A lot of people will say, well, the answer is 2. But that's not true, guys. We've got to go through and actually do the algebra here. 3 divides by 3 and becomes 1. 3 divides by 6 and becomes 2. Did my 2 magically flow to the top of my fraction? No, it's on the bottom. So x is equal to 1 half, not 2. So just be really careful when you're simplifying. If it would have been 6 over 3, the answer is 2, but it wasn't in this case. It was 3 over 6, and that actually simplifies to be 1 half. So just keep that in mind. All right, now decimals. Don't let it scare you. You guys, the idea is the exact same. We know how to add decimals. We're allowed to use calculators on the ACT. We're allowed to use calculators in class. We're asking calculators these awesome things. So you know what? Just you can't get scared of decimals. The same idea applies. So looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and decide. Do I need to simplify the left at all? Can I combine any like terms? And looking at this, I have 1.2x minus 1.3. We cannot combine those things. So that's already simplified in the most simplified form on the left. And on the right, I have 2.2x plus 4. We can't do anything with that. So really, all we're going to do is try to get x along piece by piece. And we're going to do that by combining like terms. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the correct operations, is I'm going to subtract 1.2x's from both sides. Now over here, that adds up to be 0, and that leaves me with negative 1.3 on the left, which is equal to, now I'm going to use my calculator, and I'm going to say, well, we have 2.2x's minus 1.2x's, so 2.2 minus 1.2. And that's 1x's, awesome. So we have 1x, and then that's plus 4. We still have our plus 4. Now piece by piece, we're trying to get x along. Piece by piece, we're trying to get x along. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So this is where you get your calculator. You would add up negative 4 plus negative 1.3. Or you could have just done negative 4 minus 1.3, or negative 1.3 minus 4, same thing. Um, so on the left, we have negative 5.3. 
which is equal to 1x. Now I have many of you say to me, how do we get x alone? Now that we have that 1. Well guys, 1x is just 1 times x. Anything times 1 is just itself. So really, all we have is x is equal to negative 5.3. You can think of it that way. That would be our final answer. Or you could have thought of it just 1 is just a number. You knew how to get numbers away from x when they were multiplied before. So we could have divided both sides by 1. And negative 5.3 divided by 1 is just itself. So that's how we get negative 5.3. All right, and I think from there you should be good. So thank you so much for watching my video. You guys are awesome.